A 25-year-old woman gets sent to the hospital because at her clinic visit with her primary care physician, she finds out that her hemoglobin was very, very low, about 5 milligrams per deciliter, with a hematocrit of about 20, and she desperately needs a blood transfusion. She's admitted to your team where the operant assumption is that this is probably just really bad iron deficiency anemia. So you order more labs and you find out that her MCV comes back normal around 90. This prompts you, the intern, to recall back to your days when you were studying for step one in 2020 and you were using RX Express and you think about the reticulocyte index. And because of that, you pull out your handy dandy calculator. While you expect the reticulocyte index to be low in iron deficiency anemia, you find out that in this woman, it's actually high. This completely changes the way that you might think about this 25-year-old woman's anemia. So reticulocyte index is a very, very powerful tool that can tell you a lot of additional information with no additional cost or time. So by the end of the video, we'll accomplish a few major goals. First of all, you should be able to explain the clinical value of a reticulocyte index to an anemia workup. Secondly, you should be able to derive the formula for reticulocyte index and be able to calculate it. And thirdly, you should be able to create a differential diagnosis based on the value of the reticulocyte index. So let's get started. And let's start by really simplifying anemia down to its most basic concept. If you go back to our video on erythrocytes and hematopoiesis, we can review how red blood cells are made. And as we know, the process of creating red blood cells is called erythropoiesis, where in the bone marrow, red blood cell precursors pump out immature red blood cells called reticulocytes, which then go on to make erythrocytes. Anemia, however, is loss of red blood cells, and that loss can come in two forms. It's either because the red blood cells are not being made properly, or it's because they are being destroyed. So you either have a production problem, which happens in the bone marrow, or you have a destruction problem, which is happening in your blood vessels. In a production problem, for example, your bone marrow is not working, you actually cannot produce reticulocytes at all, no matter how much your body wants to. And this sets up a very interesting dynamic where you can actually look at your reticulocyte count and your reticulocyte index in order to judge the function of the bone marrow. Now let's think about why we even need a calculator to figure out reticulocyte index. Because when you look at a CBC differential, reticulocyte count is listed there, but you can't use that value. And the reason you can't use it is because the reticulocyte count is dehydrated, literally. And reticulocyte count isn't an actual count, it's not a number, but rather it's a ratio. The reticulocyte count is the ratio of reticulocytes over the number of total red blood cells in a percentage form. So let's say that you have a patient who has a hemoglobin of 14, which is represented over here by these eight red blood cells. And then 1% of those red blood cells is a reticulocyte, which is denoted by this purple red blood cell over here. So what that means is in this normal, healthy individual who has a normal hemoglobin of about 14, about 1% of the reticulocytes are completely normal, and that's normal to be released from their bone marrow. Now let's say that they suddenly become anemic and they lose half of their red blood cell volume and their hemoglobin will drop from 14 on this side down to 7 over here. Before their bone marrow even has a chance to compensate, the reticulocyte count is going to shoot from 1% over here up to 2% over here because it's literally gone up two times more. An unexperienced eye might look at this and assume that the patient is having reticulocytosis. And therefore, you could look at this and say, oh, the bone marrow is producing more red blood cells and the bone marrow is being overstimulated. But you can't be sure because you don't know where in the process you're looking at the CBC exactly. So we have a math issue. So obviously, because we have a math problem, we need a math solution. And that's where reticulocyte index comes in. And by the way, another word for reticulocyte index is actually corrected reticulocyte count. So we correct this value by proportioning the reticulocyte count to the degree of anemia. In other words, you multiply the reticulocyte count, which we've again described right here, it's just the ratio of reticulocytes to the total amount of red blood cells. And you multiply that by the patient's hemoglobin or hematocrit divided by the standard normal within normal limits hemoglobin or hematocrit. In reality, we just use hematocrit because it's a bigger number. It gives us less numerical variation. And we standardize normal hematocrit to 45, because that's generally what most people's normal hematocrit looks like. But the idea is the same either way. So long story short, reticulocyte index is equal to a reticulocyte count times a patient's hematocrit divided by 45. 
Now let's apply this with two examples, just to make it a little more concrete, and then we can wrap up. Again, let's look at our patient, and again, the formula will just be right here on the bottom for your own reference. Let's look at our patient who suddenly dropped from a hemoglobin of 14, and let's say a hematocrit of 45, down to a hemoglobin of 7, and a hematocrit of 22.5. His or her reticulocyte count is 2%. As we already made clear, it jumped from 1% up to 2%. But we also mentioned that that's an unreliable number because it doesn't show how dehydrated the blood is. So his reticulocyte index is going to correct for this. And the reticulocyte index, you can use the number 2%, which we got from right here, multiply it by the 22.5 that we get from the patient's hematocrit divided by the 45, and this will actually give you a value of 1%. In other words, his reticulocyte index is at 1%. Or another way to say that is his corrected reticulocyte count is 1%. Let's take another example. And let's go back to our lady who came in from her primary care physician because of a hemoglobin of 5 and a hematocrit of 20. In this example, let's say her reticulocyte count was shown to be 6%. When you calculate her reticulocyte index, it'll be 6 times 20 divided by 45, and that'll give you a value of 2.67%. In other words, her corrected reticulocyte count is not 6%, but rather 2.67%. Another way to say that is 2.67% of her red blood cell mass is reticulocyte. So what does any of this actually mean? So we actually look at these values of reticulocyte index, and we can judge whether they're considered a low reticulocyte index or a high reticulocyte index, and the cutoff for that value is 2.5%. So our first patient has a low RI, and our second patient has a high RI. And what does that actually mean? What that means is that our first patient has a problem with production. In other words, they're not putting out that many reticulocytes, even though they suffer from anemia, as you can see right here. And so they have a problem where their bone marrow is not producing enough red blood cells. And in our second patient, it's a destruction problem. And this is evident by the fact that she's pumping out a lot of reticulocytes, even though her hematocrit is severely low. And that means that the bone marrow is working. And remember in the very beginning, I mentioned that in this 25-year-old woman who suddenly becomes anemic, the most common etiology for that woman would be iron deficiency anemia. But because you're now considering with this corrected reticulocyte count of 2.67%, you're thinking it's a destruction problem. It completely changes the way that you think about this patient's anemia. So this brings us to our final point, which we're going to represent in the form of a flash quiz. And this is going to call back to our video on anemia in the video that's listed just above this one. I'm going to go down this list of pathology, and I want you to tell me if you expect these patients to have a high reticulocyte index or a low reticulocyte index. So it starts with autoimmune hemolytic anemia, then aplastic anemia, then chronic kidney disease, then sickle cell anemia. Take a few moments, read through these, pause the video, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. So let's start with autoimmune hemolytic anemia. In this patient, they will have a high reticulocyte index. This is actually because in any hemolytic anemia, you're going to have a high reticulocyte index because there's a destruction problem. It's actually in the name. The blood is hemolyzed. And so the bone marrow is just going to pump out immature reticulocytes as fast as possible to compensate for the patient's destruction. What about aplastic anemia? In aplastic anemia, you're going to have a low reticulocyte index. And this is because the bone marrow has completely failed. It's aplastic, and it cannot produce anything. It might not just be a reticulocyte index less than 2.5%, but one that's abnormally low, close to 0%. What about chronic kidney disease? This one's a little trickier. This will be a low reticulocyte index. And this is because you have to remember that the kidneys produce what's called erythropoietin, which is a hormone that stimulates the bone marrow and drives erythropoiesis. So if you have chronic kidney disease, patients with chronic kidney disease are oftentimes anemic because their bone marrow starts to fail. And lastly, sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia will have a high reticulocyte index. Remember that when cells sickle, they are predisposed to splenic sequestration and then they get destroyed. So this is another example of a destruction type anemia. Okay, so let's wrap up this video. So a few things that you should take home from this. First of all, a simple reticulocyte count won't cut it. We need to standardize our reticulocyte values by calculating the reticulocyte index, which is a simple formula where you multiply reticulocyte count by the ratio of the patient's hematocrit over the standard normal hematocrit of 45. 
Secondly, a high reticulocyte index is considered over 2.5% and a low reticulocyte index is considered less than 2.5%. Third, a high reticulocyte index suggests anemia due to red blood cell loss or red blood cell destruction. And lastly, a low reticulocyte index suggests anemia due to bone marrow failure. That's it for reticulocyte index. If you like this video, please be sure to leave us a thumbs up. Thank you.